member here at Brownsville Assembly. Um, and it is so exciting to think that um, just a few years ago, our pastor stood behind this pulpit and, and asked the congregation to stand and, and go to the Lord and seek revival. And, and so the fire would come down and, and the congregation would stand and we would go to the Lord and we would call on our Father and say, Father, send revival. I didn't have a clue what revival was, but I was praying for it. Lord, send whatever it is. Let it come. We didn't know. We just knew our, our, our pastor, this man of God, had stood up here and said, if God doesn't come here, I will go wherever he is. And I would be at home and I would think, Lord, God, pastor wants it. And he says, we need it. Whatever it is, give it to him. Whatever it may be, Father. And so I'm standing here thinking, dear God, I didn't have a clue what he was talking about. And I don't think many of us now even had a clue then what the magnitude of this would be and the things that are to come. And I stand before you now to be baptized tonight. Um, a year ago, he spoke to me. The Lord spoke to my heart when revival started and said, you need to be baptized. And I went, no way. I was baptized when I was a little a little girl, that'll do. I'll get by with that. And it's not a big deal. I didn't want to get up here, whether it was embarrassment, whatever. I'll tell you right now, I would not do it. And how many of you know when the Lord keeps talking to you about something and you say no long enough, he'll leave you alone. And that's kind of scary when the Lord walks away from you, don't talk to you no more. And so I, in his, in his sovereign mercy, about two weeks ago, after a year of waiting in this tremendous revival in the river, and the hunger in my heart for him is just beyond anything I can imagine. He spoke to me about two weeks ago about being baptized. And I said, yes, this time I'm prepared. After a year of seeking you, yes, I am prepared. I'm prepared. I will get rebaptized. And I told my husband I will be rebaptized. And again, the sweet Lord spoke to me and said, I did not tell you to get rebaptized. I told you to get baptized. <laughs> He said, obviously, at five years old, it didn't do anything for you. This time, you want the top of the line, the best, the totally spotless, full of God, full of life, no going back, a new beginning, dead to the self. You want it all, and don't settle for anything less, and I'm not. There's more. Praise God. My name is Vicki Conroy, <clears throat> and you know, the word says obedience is better than sacrifice. Well, six weeks ago today was my birthday, and I disobeyed the Lord by not getting baptized. But God is so faithful and so merciful. About a week ago, he prompted me to find my baptismal certificate. It's right here. It's in the bottom drawer. My mom had saved it all these years these years. I was baptized in the Catholic Church 42 years ago today. It meant nothing. You see, I grew up being taught by my parents who, out of ignorance, I gave more reverence to Mary not knowing that the Word of God says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I believe that I, a, a man had the power to forgive my sins, not knowing that God says, no man comes to the Father but through the Son, Jesus Christ. I believed that I could wear this little thing around my neck. It was called a scapula. And it had a picture of the Blessed Virgin Mary on it. And I was taught that if I died with that thing around my neck, that I would, the next Saturday, go to heaven. 
not knowing that the word says, unless a man be born again, he shall not enter the kingdom of God. My parents taught me, not because they wanted me to be besieged, deceived, but we, they taught me as if that were true. And I was born and raised right here in Pensacola. And it grieves me that I was 24 years old before someone presented the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now I thank God that he spared my life for such a time as this, that God does have a plan for my life. Right now I'm standing before you. I thought about getting baptized in my wedding gown, but there's no way it would fit. <laughs> um, but now I stand here as part of the bride of Christ, and I began to think, the Lord began to show me that I am part of that bride. But this wedding reception is going to be different, unlike anything we've ever experienced. You see, in the natural wedding, the bride's parents foot all the bills. And for the most part, they invite most of the guests. But this wedding reception is going to be different. In fact, there's an angelic choir in an orchestra that's preparing the wedding march right now. <laughs> But see, all the expenses for this wedding were paid 2,000 years ago <laughs> by the groom. <clears throat> I can't contribute anything except just presenting myself to him. And it's going to be a sit-down dinner. I don't know what's going to be served, but I know the menu is going to be better than anything I could have ever imagined. But I want to tell all of you out there, <clears throat> This wedding reception is going to be different. It's, you're not going to be a guest. You're either going to be part of the bride of Christ or you can't come. <laughs> and right now, God has that invitation list. It's called the Lamb's Book of Life. And you have to RSVP for this wedding. <laughs> but it doesn't follow the rules of etiquette that you and I think. The R stands for repentance. <clears throat> the S stands for salvation. <clears throat> The V stands for victory in Christ Jesus. Mm. And the P stands for preparation to meet the groom. Mm. Mm. As I stand before you now, I want such an anointing in my life. In fact, Steve, I don't have to worry about my name being in hell. I sent it there. Registered mail to hell post office. <clears throat> and I want such an anointing in my life that Satan will tremble when I come against those who belong to him for fear that they're going to be snatched out of his hands. <clears throat> God, I don't want to ever get to the place where I think I have arrived. God bless you. Lord Jesus Christ, we baptize you now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I hope I can get through this. Um, I'm a little nervous. I'm Rachel Tyler. We're from Virginia. And I've been saved since I was eight. And I was baptized when I was eight. But through a long, different things going on in my life, I started having surgeries when I was 12. And I've had about 17, I think, at last count. When our pastor came to Brownsville a few months ago, he was a little maybe skeptical when he was here and he didn't really receive anything here but on the way home in the car God started working on him and when he came back I had been prayed for many times to be healed but I was really kind of sick being prayed for because I never got healed and I forgot about getting healed and just started praying for more of God and when he came back he was praying in the Timothy house I was on the floor and I didn't even know he was walking by me, and he just stretched his hand out over me as he walked by, and God started doing mighty things in my life. 
And I was so out of it in the spirit for hours that they had to take me to the sanctuary so they could clean up the Timothy house. And I kind of laid there, and over the course of the next 24 hours, I was playing in the spirit 20, excuse me, 10 times, and I was scared of it before. I was raised in an assembly of God church, but our home wasn't right, and a lot of it just didn't make sense to me. And the Lord just kept doing a work in me when I got healed, and I didn't even realize till the next day that I was healed. And when I had been down on the floor, he had put a pushing and a pulling in, in my stomach, and I realized the next day as he healed me, he was preparing me for intercessory prayer. And different things kept going on. I kept seeing, um, I had one service where I had lightning bolts hit me in the head, and I thought, Lord, this is too strange to even tell anybody about. And just different things that I didn't understand. And I had been called into the ministry when I was 12, but through going through divorce, I just thought God would never use me. And it was such a lie of Satan. And when I came here, when Steve preached the other night, the Lord told me to come up front. And I thought, God, why? I know you. I'm a Christian. And he, he said, you have sin in your life. And when I came to the altar, the Lord just dealt with me about a heritage of anger. My father's such an angry man. And that I needed to clean that up. And even though I didn't display it the way that he did, that I had anger in my heart and I couldn't intercede for other people and be angry at the same time. And I had bought a ring while I was here at the beach. And I had it on my right hand since I wasn't married. And the Lord told me to take it off and put it on my left hand that he was marrying me. And that I wasn't to look upon another man, that it was just to be a union of me and him. And that if he ever brought another man into my life, it would be a godly union unlike any I had ever known. And I just, when I came here tonight and they were teaching the class, one of the first things she handed out was little wedding rings. And I thought, God, that's you. And one of the first things, well, the first thing, the very first thing she wrote on the board was anger. And I thought, God, I know I'm in your appointed place that this is the time that you're going to make me new. You're going to bury all that old junk, and you're going to bring me up different. And when I go home, I'm going to help to baptize my children. One has been baptized, but the other two hadn't, and I couldn't understand. I knew that was part of God's plan. But he showed me through this trip that I wasn't cleaned out enough. I wasn't pure enough to even help baptize my own children. And God's telling you tonight, don't think you're holy if you're not. You run to the altar when they give the altar call because we can be deceived. And today and when we went to the mall, Satan almost tried to kill me. It's the first time I had been sick since I got healed. And I was in the bathroom of the mall, and I thought I was going to die. And I could hear Satan saying to me, you're going to pay a price. Do you want to pay this price? And right in the middle of the mall, I said, Satan, you go back to the pit of hell. I'll pay any price for Jesus. <laughs> Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. My name is Ann Humphrey, and I love Jesus. Gretchen, and um, I used to sit in a pew in my church, and I ignored every calling that the Holy Spirit gave me, because I didn't think it was real. I had just decided that everybody around me was crazy. I had just decided that they couldn't possibly be feeling what they were saying they were feeling. I had decided that I knew everything, that I knew what was right and what was wrong. I mean, after all, I was a school teacher and I knew enough. 
I knew enough to teach kids and I must know enough about these things too. I mean, my grandmother, she was a, a very powerful woman of God. And I saw people come and go out of those pews. And I watched closely. I watched their lives and I watched how they talked and how they walked. And I just never saw anything that really proved to me that God was real. And I was a very bitter person and a very critical person. And I, I came to this church because I was asked to come. And I came and I walked in these doors and though I denied it, I knew I felt something. And I sat here and I came again because I was asked to come again because I said, oh, I went there, I did that, that's over, that's done. And I came again. And I came because I was very, very upset at my husband and I, I didn't want to be married anymore. I was tired of the life that I had. My best friend had moved away and she was so on fire for God. I was glad she moved away and pardoned me because I just couldn't stand the conviction around her anymore. And um, I had, um, I praised God for her though. And she prayed for me like other people did. And I, I came here and I thought, well, my husband's going to go down to those altars and everything's going to be all right. But I was sitting right back there. And I came running. And I gave my life to God. And I want to tell you that that was a year ago. This Sunday will be a year, and that's my best friend's birthday. I came to God on her birthday. I didn't even realize it until after it was over. And um, I came to be baptized this weekend because I've been baptized before. I didn't understand what I was doing. But this time I come before you and before God to tell you that I have wavered in everything I've ever done. I've gone back on things I've said I was going to do and didn't do them. But this time I come before you, God, to tell you that I don't ever want to go back that my salvation was the engagement and that this is the marriage and that for the one year that you gave me, the one year of, of glory that I have seen, I ask that you multiply that year by all the years you would have me to be on this earth and I ask you, God, to multiply the fire in my heart and for the people that have said to me since I've received this fire, that they have said to me, oh, once you cool down, once, once you get, you know, used to being saved, everything's going to be okay. But I proclaim to you and I say to God now, I never, ever want to not be on fire. I never, never want to be anywhere away from God. So, when I go down under these waters, I'm coming up on fire, and I'm staying on fire the rest of the days of my life. My name is Patsy Norwood, and that was my daughter. I have a story that might boggle your mind just a little bit. October 1994, my mother was buried in this, well, her, fun her funeral was at this church. She is the grandmother that my daughter was talking about that was on fire for God. She was a leader. She had 11 children. On the day of her funeral, I had laryngitis. I could not sing. I was in such grief. I missed her so. Brother Kilpatrick asked the congregation, I believe it was what he, he or Brother Strange asked the congregation to sing Amazing Grace. 
They sang Amazing Grace. And as they sang, I couldn't sing, but I could hear my mother all up in here. I could hear her singing Amazing Grace. After that, this was in October of 1994. The revival started in June of 1995. I'm not trying to give my mother any credit, but I know that God promised her that he would save her children. I'm one of those children. My brother goes to church here, and he came to the revival. His name is Doug. He and his wife, Doug and Mary Broxon. They came here. My brother called me four times after the revival started. He said, Patsy, would you come to the revival? I claimed to be a Christian, but I was so afraid. I kept saying no. I found this excuse or that excuse. But we went up to North Carolina, visited my stepson and his wife, and she really condemned me. She said, Patsy, you sung all these years, and you had a blessing of the Lord, and you lost it, and you offended me. It didn't hurt my feelings. I knew she needed to tell me that. And I came back. I said, Lord, on the way back, I said, if you'll just let that revival still be going on, I will go. And I came, and I, my brother brought me down. I kind of fooled around, held the grandchildren, fooled around, because I was afraid to be prayed for. Why? I don't know. I guess I thought I had something to hide, but I was prayed for, and I fell out. I lost my legs. <laughs> did not want to, but I did. And ever since then, the, some of the most marvelous, miraculous things have happened. I was, in a way, I guess, worshiping my mother's religion, thinking about her every time I came to this church and how, Lord, I know that, that he let her go to heaven, and I knew that up there she, she made it, but she wanted her children saved. And I said, Lord, I wish so much I could talk to my mother about the revival where she was saved. And not, it must have been about 1927. I said, Lord, I wish so much I could talk to her. I have so many questions I want to ask her. There was no way I could. But he did the second best thing. He gave me a dream on Tuesday night. I came to the revival. On this Tuesday night, I had a dream that I talked to Mama. We were sitting on this long porch, and she was telling me, now, Patsy, she said, you want to know all about this re revival, I'm going to tell you. And she started telling me, and I woke up. And I was so happy because I'd gotten to talk to her but she didn't get to tell me about where she was saved, how she was saved, what kind of experience she had. I came to church, this is on a Tuesday night, and I came to church here on Thursday night. And I was standing in the back, I'd gone to see about my granddaughter, and I was standing in the back, and the crowd was so large. And I saw this man coming up the aisle, and I said, I'm just gonna move on. Something said to me, no, you're not. You stand right here. And I stood there. And this man walked by me, had white hair. And I looked at him and I said, I know that man. And I asked the man behind him, I said, what's that man's name? He said, Brother Corbin. Well, I, my sister had told me the next morning of the dream that Brother Corbin had preached the revival at Holly where my mother was saved. And I turned to Brother Corbin and I said, Brother Corbin, what is your first name? He said, Ernest. I said, oh, Brother Corbin, I need to talk to you. Well, he told me about going and seeing my mother and daddy, and he was the one that preached the Holly Revival. He told me about going and seeing my mother and daddy, and they were sitting on this long porch, just like the porch I'd sat on with Mama in the dream. And he asked them to come to the revival. And they came that night, and they were saved. And how wonderful they were saved because they took us to church all these years. But for so many years, I was away from the Lord. And this is my desire. Let the meditation 
of my, how's it go, the meditation of my mouth. Let the words of my heart and the meditation, uh, how does it go? <laughs> Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thine sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And let me tell you something. This mouth has really said some bad words to some people, but no more. You cannot believe the change in me. And this revival has been the most wonderful thing I have ever been in my life. It is wonderful. And I just thank the Lord for his blessing. upon your profession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, baptize you now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yes, Hi, my name is Alicia. I'm 12 years old. I was brought here about a couple of Saturdays ago on June 6th. And by my best friend Candace and her mom, and I worship the Lord. And he, I, I accept him as my Lord and Savior, my King, and my very best friend. And I am no longer listening to the devil's lies. stay here was July 3rd and I was invited by some friends and I didn't want to come and I did, I'd seen everybody shaking and I thought that it looked funny and then, and then I asked my friend what it was all about she said it was the Holy Spirit and I didn't believe in it so then I came back the 5th and I started having the Holy Spirit in me and everybody prayed for me and now I that no one can take me away from church that's the only thing I ever want that's the only thing I want to do and I love the Lord of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we baptize you now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. If it wasn't for God, um, my name is Jessica Shin. If it wasn't for God today, I would not be here because we had a little bit of trouble getting the money and stuff, but he provided for us. Melissa Evans, and I'm from Pittsfield, Illinois. And God is my strength. He's my joy. He gives me peace. He just overflows within me, and he just enables me to witness to other people. I'm from Pittsfield, Illinois, and it's a little farm town. We don't, we don't have you know big, huge revivals where everybody comes. We're going to because we're bringing it back to them. We're taking it back to them. But. But I had, I had a vision about this place. I had watched a video and I had a vision about this place and I could see us down here and I could see God working in us and, and we just don't realize how, how lucky we are, how much God loves us. He just loves us so much. He just loves us and I love him so much too. Melissa, upon your profession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we baptize you now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
Hi, my name is Tony Rice. And first thing, Pastor, last Saturday night, I'm the one that hit my head on the bench over there. I'm okay. <laughs> uh, I got baptized at a Baptist church, 93. I tried my hardest not to go to a bar that day. But that night, I spent all night long in there, and I've just been there ever since. I cried out, Lord, to give me a husband that would walk with me and be with me and love me. And I asked him to save me, and I've been born again. And God has, I have been coming here, and I had a critical spirit over all this. And God told me, he says, who are you? He loves every one of y'all. He loves me. And he's calling to your heart. You might look at this and laugh in your heart, well, that's not for me, but it is for you, because the Bible says, not the preacher says, not what Brother Steve says, but you're going to hell if you don't give your life to the Lord. Well, I've been born again for three years now, and God told me to do this. So, Father, dear Lord Jesus, my Savior, my Comforter, Holy Spirit, Lord God, I give my life totally and I lay it down before you, Lord God, and I will die for you. I love you, Jesus. I honor you, praise you, and give you the glory. I love you, Lord God, and I thank you for this revival, Lord. Shake them, Lord, shake them, shake them, Lord, wake them up, I love you. My name is Polly White. I'm a transplant to Macon, Georgia. And I came down here because of the revival to get filled up with the Holy Spirit. And here I am, giving my whole life to Jesus. I was baptized when I was 10 years old but I turned away from God. And I lived in sin for a lot of years. Two years ago, I gave my life back to Jesus. So I just want to take this, this river of water home with me. And I'm going to keep it in my soul. I just praise him tonight. I praise him tonight for this opportunity to devote my life to him. Holly, upon your profession of faith, Lord Jesus Christ, we baptize you now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. in God. My mom was involved in witchcraft. Uh, I grew up around all the when I was little. I was abused physically and sexually. Um, 
I hate it, God. I thought, why me, God? And I came here last year at the Brownsville Revival on Father's Day, my first time, and I didn't believe in God. And I walked into those doors. I felt something in my heart. suicide twice. I put my life together and I feel like a new person. Thank you. Thank you Lord. to be here because Satan didn't want me to be here tonight because on the way here we had a blowout and I was driving and God protected us and then somebody came and picked us up and brought us to Pensacola and took us to a gas station and we called a cab we got here five minutes after seven, and I was so afraid I was not going to get baptized because I knew this is what God wanted me to do. Because I backslid for, for two years, and my sister got baptized last Friday night, and if it wasn't for her prayers and my family, I don't think I'd be here. And I just want to praise God for that. Thank you, Lord. Baptize you now in the name of the Father, Son, and all my My name is Gen Ginger. I was with Sherry on the way over here. And I want to say that Satan is an idiot. <laughs> Because I know if I give him the glory, he'll try to win. Buyers, and um, I just want to thank God. Um, the first time I came to Revival was in November, two weeks after I tried to kill myself. And the Lord touched me then and gave me an awesome testimony. And I went back home and I didn't live a life that God had called me to live. And I came back down here with my mom and I honestly thought that there was no way that God could touch me again. I didn't think he could love me enough to give me what he gave me before. And one Thursday night in youth, um, Brother Richard said, 
they were seeing in people's lives that were keeping them from God. And God knows I've had so many things that kept me from him. But that night, I went to the altar and gave him all my heart and my pain and my problems. And he gave me this. <laughs> And with this, he gave me a desire to serve him and love him and nothing else. And he's given me the desire to leave my friends that I had back home that caused me to fall before. And to serve him, I do anything for him. He's, I pray that when he touched me that this time, it'd be for real and that he placed a hunger in my life for him, and he's done that and so much more. And so now I'm getting baptized and saying goodbye to Satan and the old things. And I'm saying, God, I'm going to serve you now with everything. Whatever you want for my life, Lord Jesus, just let it happen, Lord God. Whatever you want, Lord God, just let it happen. Baptize you now in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hi, my name is Pamela Hain. I'm from Mobile, Alabama. I just wanted to say that I have a sub. The Lord is my Savior. Yeah. I'm Naisha, and um, I've been a Christian now for three years. And in the time that I've been a Christian, I had put idols before me. I had put my friends, I mean not before me, but before God. I had put my friends before God, and then I put a relationship before God. But because God loves me so much, he allowed, he allowed those things to be taken away, and I... Instead of turning to him, I turned away, and I fell into a deep depression where I wanted to kill myself, and I had no hope and no sense of future. I dropped out of high school, and I just, I wanted my life to end, but God's given me hope, and he's given me a future. He's called me to be a missionary, and I'm, I'm ready to serve him. Jesus Christ, we baptize you now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Hello, I'm Charles Mims. Um, last year, I was in a lot of stuff that I shouldn't have been, but God really brought me out of a lot of 
sins, and he's brought me up, you know, and just done wonderful things in my life since then. So, and, you know, I was told that I need to be baptized. So, I finally came up here. Baptize you now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. My name is Amy, and God has delivered me of so much stuff. He healed me of cancer and and um, delivered me from. I was raped when I was in seventh grade, and he delivered me of that. Everything he had, I've gone through eating disorders, everything, and he's delivered me of it. So I just thank God, and I, and I just pray that he'll be able to use me for the, for the remainder that I'm on this earth, that he'll be able to use me, and I'll be willing to be used by him. Dolly Sager, and I'm from Hemphill, Texas. I was baptized when I was 12. I was saved when I was 12, and then my family dropped out of church, so I didn't go to church except sporadically until the last year. When I got back in church, Baptist church, I realized that something wasn't right. This little voice kept telling me there's more, and I've been praying for the truth for several months. My husband and I gave our land and ourselves to the Lord, and I continue to pray for the truth. I've read some books. I've read the Bible looking for the truth. June 7th, in another church, my husband was healed. He's had back problems for nine years. He was healed in one night with one prayer. Last Sunday, we went to another church visiting with my daughter. And a minister there healed the people that came forward to be healed. And then he said, there's a woman in the audience that has breast problems. She found a lump in her breast. And she's afraid to go find out what it is. The Lord told me he has a healing for you. And I sat there because God wouldn't call me forward. This was another congregation. He would call his own people from that church. And nobody came forward. And the poor little minister said, please don't make a fool of me. Maybe it's heartburn. Maybe it's just a pain in the chest. Maybe it's a man, but I thought it was a woman. <laughs> he finally said, you've never asked me to heal you. You've never complained but you're worried. And I stood up and walked up there and God had healed me last Sunday. I don't have breast pain. It's gone. I was still looking for the truth when I came to Brownsville Assembly of God. I came here for two reasons. The flesh, curiosity, spiritual looking for God, looking for the truth. God talked to me in church July, June 30th. We were praying for our crusade in Hemphill, Texas. It starts August the 4th and goes through the 8th. And I keep telling him it's not going through the 8th, it's going on. But that night, Sunday night, June 30th, God said, Dolly, I want you to fast and pray to the crusade. And I said, what? I can't go that long without eating. And he said, and maybe longer. I've been 19 days without eating and I'm still walking and I'm still talking. When I came here Wednesday night, I found God. The Holy Spirit is alive and well. And you can be filled. And I just thank God. 
that I get to get my life cleaned up and baptized and clean so that he can use me. And Jesus, you just use me any way you want. You can take everything that you've ever given us in this world away. Just don't you leave me ever again. Dolly, upon your profession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we baptize you now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. to Brian, and I just want to say that I love God with all my heart. McIntyre. Um, June 29th, I came here. A friend of mine brought me here, and uh, I've been going to church all my life, and I'm 21 years old, and I've never in my life felt anything like this before. <laughs> and um, on June 29th, I came here, and Brother Hill was preaching on um, the three checks, the surface, the spot, and the sailor, and and when he got to the sailor, God said, "You better run." So whenever he gave the altar call, I ran. I ran so fast. Actually, I, I was walking, but I thought I was running. So I came down and I rededicated my life totally, totally to God, and I never, ever, ever want to leave Him again. Thank you. Baptize you now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hello, my name is Carrie, and I've been having a lot of problems with anger, and before I came here, and um. When I came here, um, I got prayed for about it and everything, and um, I'm nervous. <laughs> um, I almost lost my children because of it. <laughs> Instead of getting over to God because of my anger, <laughs> and I was supposed to give up. And so um, I started praying about it, and I just gave it to God. And he's been dealing with it, and my church is the most precious thing beside God to me. And I just, I just want more knowledge and understanding of what he wants me to do with my kids and want to lead my children toward God and... I just want to thank God for my kids. Thank you. You know, I've been a Christian all my life, I thought. I'm from I'm Marlene. I'm from Alaska. And I 
had no intentions of coming into this church. My sister said she wanted me to come, and I said no. And I said, if I go, I only want to stay until 10 o'clock. <laughs> And that, and that was last Wednesday, <laughs> and I've, I've been coming ever since. <laughs> and I, I've, I've asked the Lord to take the burdens away because I have heavy burdens. And I just feel like everything's been lifted. <laughs> and I just want to be blessed by the Lord and starting over. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Before I came, I had had two dreams. I had one dream in which this beautiful black lady had come to me and she had this huge, precious stone. It resembled that 86,000 carat sapphire and she laid it in my lap and she said, what do you want from God? And I said, I want to have the spirit of intercession and supplication for revival for America and for the church. And then this past Saturday, I had a dream in which I kept getting in and out of bed with a man, but he wasn't my husband. And I didn't know what that meant. My first dream spoke for itself. And so I inquired, and the Lord began to show me that I was in bed with the wrong man, that I needed to get out of the place where I was fraternizing or compromising and having a self-lifestyle that looked religious, take the mask off where he saw me on the other side, and I was to come into his bedchamber, and I was to lie down with the Spirit of God and I want you to know, since I've been here, this is a holy city and this is a holy habitation. And I praise God that he counted me worthy that I could behold and see his glory. And I thank God that he has now released my heart that I can love him with purity. My name is Natalie Bryant, and right about now I have a friend up in the balcony that's probably about freaked out. Um, this is the kind of spare the moment thing for me. I was up in the balcony and I was listening to everybody about being baptized, and like everybody else, I was baptized about age eight. I guess that's the average age nowadays. But um, I just kept hearing God speaking to me about being baptized. And I wanted to be baptized, and I was like, well, you know, I'll just have to get baptized. I'll have to find out how I can do that and everything. And, I felt like God told me, you know, I want you to go down the altar and pray. So I went down to the altar, and this was about 10 minutes ago. And then I felt like God says, you need to go get baptized right now. And I was like, well, okay. So when I asked somebody, they said, well, you don't even have clothes. I said, well, it just so happened the friend that's with me spent the night with me last night, and all her clothes were in my car, so I'm wearing her clothes right now. Um... <laughs> I'm sorry, Melanie. <laughs> They'll dry. I would even have gotten baptized in my clothes because God told me to. Here lately, I've really had a real bad struggle, and I've already given my testimony. Steve's brought me up here, and I gave my testimony and a word that the Lord had given me, and I've really struggled lately. I felt like God had, had left me, and I, I was struggling so hard. I was like, God, you know, I don't feel you. I, I don't feel anymore. You know, God, what did I do wrong? I kept praying, God, in this day, somebody told me and heard a tape about sometimes when I feel like God is not around when he really is. He's preparing to take us to a newer height and a new anointing. And yesterday I was at work, and I work at Quincy's and um, in Mobile. 
and I was talking to a table and they went to College Hill Baptist Church and they started talking about God and I was like, it's great. And one of my tables overheard me and it just so happened I used to work with this guy at another job and he always cheated on his wife and everything and he overheard me and he was talking, he said, I overheard you talking about Brown. So I said, yes. He said, so you went there and you got saved and everything. I said, yes. And he said, I've gotten saved recently too. And his wife was right there. He said, me and my wife really love one another now. And it just blessed me because there, you know, was a guy that I thought when he sat in my section, I made a judgment against him. I thought, God, you sat a jerk in my section. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to repent. And I went to my other table. And this guy, he had a promise keeper shirt on. And I'm sure y'all know what the promise keepers are. And last night, I felt like I had a wonderful night at church. And um, I, lately, I went to the doctor. I thought I'd been having anxiety attacks. I, didn't, I couldn't understand it. I just, my heart would start racing. I'd start shaking. I couldn't breathe. I felt like, just, I, you know, I just couldn't understand it and everything. And, you know, it, I was having it at work all the time. But when I came home last night, my parents had some friends over that I'd never met. And she's really strong and, in, 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 you know, as far as prophecy goes and everything. And I was telling her, I said, Mom, I had an anxiety attack today at work. And the lady said, you're not having anxiety attacks. You're interceding for these people. <laughs> so I feel like God took me to my new height. And I'm just glad that these clothes are in my car. <laughs> Baptize you now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hi, my name is Leilani Bailey. I live in Sunrise, Florida. I've been a religious Christian for the about five and a half years, and I, when I heard about the revival, I just, you know, I said, sure, it's just something that's going to fade away. God's not real. He's never been real, because I've never had to give him a place in my heart. I only gave him a place in my head. And I started watching the tapes, and I said, Lord, I want that. I, I want that. And I told God I would never, ever ride a plane. But I prayed, I said, God, if you get me to this revival, I will fly, I will swim, I will do anything to get to this revival. Needless to say, I rode my first plane today. Hallelujah! Woo! And I want to go back, and I am not leaving this place until I, I don't want nothing left. I only want more of the Lord, and I will not leave until I get it. Hallelujah. Hello, my name is John Bailey. I'm from Sunrise, Florida, close to Fort Lauderdale. But all my life, I really hadn't made a big dedication to the Lord Jesus Christ. But I'm here to say right now, I am 100%. I'm sold out. John, upon the confession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we baptize you now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. My name is Brian. Um, all I can say is that God is truly incredible. That's it. <laughs> Today and tomorrow and the day after. My name is Roy. I'm from Mississippi. I've never been addicted to drugs. I've never been an alcoholic. 
I've never been sexually abused. I've been raised in church most of my life, but I've never really known the Lord. I finally realized through this revival that I'm not going to try to live for Jesus anymore. My way, I'm going to do it his way. And I just want more of him. Jesus Christ, we baptize you now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well, my name is Dustin, and I've been a Christian for about basically all my life, and I was basically playing the game of religion. And when I came down here on Wednesday, Thursday, God just totally changed my heart. And he just showed me that how I need to be. And I just want to praise the Lord that I'm a new creature. And I just thank him, Father. My name is Miguel Carrion. I've, um, I've done some bold things in the world before. I've sinned, and I, and I went out and I did it bold. And, and I hurt Jesus and I knew it. And the sad thing about it, I was, I was in church at the same time. And I thought I, I was playing church. I thought I was going to heaven, but it was headed straight to hell and didn't even know it. But the, tonight, I want to do something bold for Jesus. And tonight, I want to make a Jesus proud and let the Satan see me do something bold for him. How y'all doing tonight? Uh, my name's Stephen Downey, and I just want to say that um, man, I really love Jesus. Uh, I ran from him for 25 years, and I always knew who he was, and I just, I don't know, I guess I wanted to be selfish, and, uh, and I just got tired of running, and one day I just said, okay, let's go, let's go to the next level. I'm tired of being out swinging around in the world, I want to swing for you now. And uh, uh, I just want to say to you parents tonight that you may not know where your kids are tonight, um, only one of my parents are saved. and. Uh, she told me the other night that she never thought that she would see the salvation of any of her children in her lifetime. My well, mom, look what Jesus did for you. You got me now. Jonathan Cobbs. I got baptized when I was younger, but I didn't do it for God. I just did it because everybody else was doing it. But I came two weeks ago and decided that I needed to come be baptized for God. So I wanted him to energize me so I can go back to my church and help us, help us all to change it. And when I go back to school in Atlanta, and just uh, change Georgia State in Atlanta with Campus Crusade. 
Hi, my name is Daniel, and uh, I was raised in a Christian family, and I accepted Christ as my Savior when I was five years old, but I didn't really know what it meant, so I, like, I didn't live for Christ like I should have, and that, uh, I was at a bad position because I went around and claimed I was a Christian, but I didn't live the life. And, uh, I was baptized about a couple years ago, but it was just, it didn't mean anything because they were just like, you want to get baptized? So I was like, okay, sure, I'll get baptized. This time, I know what it means. I'm dedicating my life to the Lord, and I want to serve Him with all my heart and my strength and my soul and all my mind. That's why I'm here. Sumner, and I'm 14, and I got saved March 17th, and I thought that it was time for me to get baptized, and if you have, like, people in your family that need to get saved, you need to get them saved, so when you go to heaven, they can come with you. Justin Rice, and I live in Crespi, Florida, and I love the Lord with all my heart. My name is Don Rice. I'm 34 years old. I'm from Crestview, Florida. I was baptized when I was eight years old in a Baptist church. And after I was baptized, that was it. I didn't know there was more. But man, there's more. Oh, oh Lord, there's more. There's so much more. God is awesome. And Jesus loves us. He loves us so much. And I want it all. I want it all, Lord. All of you, Jesus. Nothing else, Lord. I love you with all my heart. God, we upon your profession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we baptize you now in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I was baptized when I was six years old, and I knew that God was the Lord, and I loved Him. But I knew that I didn't wasn't I didn't know why I was baptized. It didn't seem right, and it has been in church almost all my life. And when I was like in the fifth grade, I wished that I was dead because I hated the world so much. <laughs> Jesus, and all my heart, and never 
since the beginning of summer, I wanted to be baptized because I knew I needed to do it again because it wasn't right the first time. <laughs> and tonight, when I saw these people getting baptized, I knew it was right and I needed to get it now or I might never get it or have a chance to get it again. My name is Greg, I'm from Illinois. I was saved at an early age, but I just got away from God and I went to Nazarene church and my mom got me back to go into Assembly God church and I got blessed in the Holy Spirit June 22nd and I just know that now that when I die, I know where I'm gonna go and for the first time in my life, I have content, peace and joy and just I'm on fire for Christ and I just knew that when we came up here with the youth group that I needed to do this. but I'd rather you think of me as a child of God like I know a lot of you are in this room and um, I'm here because I love the Lord and I wanted to come to where he was and not just this time but for the rest of my life I always want to go where the Lord is and um, I've, never, I've never been baptized just because um, I've never really felt like um, I, I don't know like I had the right to or that the Lord was in me enough I guess, I don't know, but um, I'm just here to tell you today that I want this water to be a symbol of what I believe the Holy Spirit's going to do to me, and I don't want it to just be in me or part of me, but I want it to be all over me and dripping off me, and when I walk by people, I want it to just flow off me and all over me and all over everyone I ever come in contact with. Praise God. My name is John. I'm here because I'm a sinner. I sinned against this church. I sinned against this revival. The good news is I'm forgiven. Because this water is going to wash me. The blood of Jesus has washed me. I'm here to serve notice to Satan. I'm not passive anymore. I'm going to fight you with every last ounce I have for the rest of my life. My name is John Bruce Graham, and uh, I'm 65 years old, and I uh, called the First Baptist Church in uh, La Joy, Florida, because about 40 years ago, I accepted Christ as my Savior, and I had a vague recollection that I'd been baptized, but my name wasn't on the books, and the Lord led me 
to this church and uh, I'm rededicating my life to Jesus. And when I'm buried with him tonight in this baptismal waters and I'm raised again with him, I, I'm, I will obey you, Jesus, as long as I'm alive on this earth. Amen. And I've got something to say. Please, if you don't know that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, don't wait until you're 55 and call up and find out that you hadn't been baptized because if, if you wait till you stand before the great white throne judgment your name is not going to be there my profession is faith is that Jesus is my Lord and my Savior and I trust in him for my salvation Ken Landon. I'm a pastor, a recent graduate of the seminary. When I first went to the seminary, I thought I loved God with all my heart, mind, body, and soul. I graduated a little over a month ago, and I had to stand before my peers and tell them I was a liar. In 1986, the Lord said to me, be a disciple, follow me. And then I lost everything. I lost my home, my family. And I got mad at God. And I pushed that anger and bitterness all the way down inside of me. And there's some of you here tonight who say you love God, but yet you're bitter and angry and unforgiven. There's some of you here tonight that I really believe that need to look in your heart and see if you really love God. You see, I was so abused as a child, and my dad told me I wasn't his son and to never come home, and I was always told I was a bastard. And even when I got saved, I could believe in Jesus, but I couldn't believe in the Father. And all these years, I've been battling, wanting to be loved by the Father. And when my wife divorced me and my daughter told me I was her worst nightmare, and she hated me. I reached out to the world for that peace and that love. But just as I got ready to graduate from the seminary, God worked a miracle to bring me here. And I got down to the last day, and bless you, Steve. He said, this man here that's seeking the anointing of God, but he's got junk in his life. And I got on my face that night and confessed that junk. And I even went and found a friend in the deliverance ministry. And I said, oh God, deliver me. I want to be the man that you called me to be. And when I go down in this water tonight, I said, oh God, let the old man die and let you reign forever and ever. That dear God, that my life may glorify yes, you whatever's left in Jesus Christ's name. God. If you're driving, if you're driving a Chevrolet Corsica with an Okaloosa tag, your lights are on. White Chevrolet Corsica. Do we have another one? One more. My name is 
Jennifer, and I'm 12, and and one one night I had I had a dream that got to come back, and I was still here, and I thought that I because my parents are Christians, and I thought that. That I'd be safe, but I had to make my own choice. And that that dream just changed my life, and it doesn't matter if you're religious and you know the whole Bible by heart, you have to make a decision. To and ever since that that night, I just nothing's gonna separate me from him. I just love him.